Hi, welcome to Bad Food Blog. And today's episode is basically cauliflower cheese. I was going to say something clever, but I don't know if this one counts as bad food. I think it kind of does because cauliflower cheese is quite fatty. It's a way of turning a vegetable into a lovely like cheese bake, basically. And therefore making it not so healthy. First thing I've got to do is remove the leaves. My son is upset that we're making cauliflower cheese. He wants to have biscuits instead. Aren't you, Max? Yeah. Well, we can't have biscuits, we're having cauliflower cheese. This is a really nice head of cauliflower. As you can see, it's absolutely enormous. I know what to do with it. Well, what I need to do... Slice it up into 20,000 min million bits. I've got to cut it into quite a few bits. And then what I've got to do, I've got to get rid of the stalk in the middle here. Now, the best way to do that is to kind of cut around it using a sharp knife. But the scary part about doing that is, is this knife is really is really sharp. So I have to be very careful about how I do that. Getting there. One more. And another one. Background again. I can feel it coming to pieces. There we go, just one more. And now I should just be able to pull it apart. There we go. Let's just twist the knife round, and I should just have the core ah, come that's apart. That's not the core. That is, that's the core. You're joking. No, nope, the rest of it's edible. The rest of it looks yep. unedible. The rest of it is edible. Right, now this is going to get pressure cooked in the Ninja Foodie for one minute at high pressure. One full minute for what? One full High minute. Pressure. Yep. Oh. With a quarter of a liter of water or 250 milliliters or a round a cup of water and a half. I don't know what it is in American measurements. But so I have these. I now need to get the Ninja Foodie ready. I don't think I washed it up since the last time I used it. So there's going to be a bit of a pause. So here we are. Uh, I've washed up the Ninja Foodie pot. Um, I've got to break these up into slightly smaller florets if I'm going to make them into the cheese. So I need to break them up into slightly can smaller pieces. Can I help? Yeah, you can. You can just break them up. We want them. Oh. Yeah, it's cold. No, oh, actually it's sort of... We want to break these big bits off, okay? So, no, too small. Wait, this? too small. I'm actually trying. That's about right. It's almost impossible for me. Well, I'd rather get a knife. You just want to break the very big bits off the end. I can't you know? do it. Just use the palm of your hand and break it up like that. I'll I do just, it. I just made it explode. Yeah, you did. Yikes. <laughs> it's amazing how much yummy stuff there is in one cauliflower. Well, have a look. Come and have a look in the thing. Okay. Tip it over so the camera can see. See? That's a lot of yummy stuff. Wait, don't we put water in it? Yeah, we don't need to put too much water in because we're kind of going to no, pressure what? cook it. I can go for water myself. No. Oh, you're going to make yourself a drink. Yeah, that's fine. There we go. So, there we go. That's what the cauliflower broke down into. Pretty nice, huh? Right. This bit's easy enough. That was 300 milliliters. Slightly more than I thought because there was a lot, a little bit more there. Now I'm going to have to clean this mess up. Let's scoot over to the other side. Here we are at the pressure cooker. The good old Ninja Foodie lid goes on. And as always, I have failed to prepare it properly. And I don't need many of these things plugged in. There we go. Let's plug it in. Turn it on. Pressure, high. 
It said one minute, but I'm going to go for two because that was a hell of a lot of um, cauliflower. And I think we need to have a slightly longer time than one minute on it. It's not going to work with one with two minutes. It's going to work with one minute. No, nope, we're going to do we're going to do two minutes because it's a lot more cauliflower. No. There we go. It's going to take ages to heat up anyway. There we go. We will return once that is good. And well, I'm going to show you me making the sauce, which is going to take a little bit of time, but it's going to be a nice cheesy sauce. So here we are at the. Um, cheese sauce stage. So I've got some garlic powder, some pepper, I'm going to put a little bit of salt in there. Whoops! There's a bit more pepper going in. I'm gently heating that. I was heating it quite aggressively but that was just mostly heating the pan. Now this seems a little radical at first but when you do a cheese sauce for a meal like this it's not going to taste as strong as you think immediately. Now this is a cheese sauce so its base is going to be milk. So I got all those ingredients mixed. The oil's going. It smells fantastic because of the garlic. Get the milk in there. And now for the ingredients that matter. This one's going to be made up of two different types of cheeses. So, for the sauce, the first types of cheese is going to be good old cheddar. There's some left over here. Leftover cheddar, I'm just going to chop that up. Oh, camera could be a better angle. There we go. You can hear the uh, pressure cooker boiling away next to me. Max, can you get the last two advent calendar cheeses from the uh, oh, fridge? I so, so I didn't actually eat these on camera. This is the 23rd and 24th of December. It's... Advent calendar cheeses. Where is that? They're in the drawer. So I'm going to add those as well. And this is a good amount of cheese. This is about half the amount of cheese you'll need for a cheese sauce. Oh, yeah, I don't know where it is. They're just two loose blocks of cheese, Max. They're quite small. They're in the drawer. The top drawer. You know the middle drawer? Found, it, found one. Found two. Don't give them to me. We're going to put them in this, right? Yep. So we have the vintage cheddar. Mine is fine, little, like a tiny bit. You want me to, like you you want cut to... off a little and then I... Okay, this is... You're going to like this one. It's quite a strong cheese. Wow, pressure cooker is going crazy. Okay, I'm going to cut you off a little bit. There you are. No, I don't want that much. That's a little bit. Mm. Mm. That's a really strong cheese. Pretty nice. Do you want to try some of the red Leicester? No. Oh, why not? And there's the red Leicester going in as well. Yeah, the pressure cooker there building up. That valve will kick in any second. What happened to that soup? Now, the other ingredients in a cheese sauce is, of course, flour. So by my reckoning, this cheese sauce is going to need three tablespoons of flour for that amount of milk. So it's about three quarters of a pint or two thirds of a pint. Just so it'll thicken up nicely. Let's get a wooden spoon and make sure that's all stirred in. And let's take away the bamboo chopping board. Cheese sauce is slowly coming together. 
Let's turn it down a bit. It's reaching the point where the cheese is melting, so I have to turn the heat down just to allow the cheese sauce to sort of melt and mix everything together. This again, now we've added the ingredients, is the boring part. So I will continue stirring this and uh, waiting for the uh, two minutes to be up there. And then I'll show you all when I'm putting it into the tray. The cheese sauce shall be ready in a minute. Now, all the Ninja Foodi instructions I found told me to do this in the Ninja Foodi whilst you let the uh, sauce, uh, where you let the cauliflower cool down and rest. But to be honest, I, I've got pans. I use pans. I'm going to use pans for this. It's easier. There we go. This needs a little bit of paprika and a little bit of this. One of my favorite ingredients for cheese sauces. Liam Perry's fantastic stuff. Adds a bit of color, goes very well with cheese, and is naturally high in monosodium glutinate, which is probably not a bad thing. Probably because anchovies, which is made out of a lot high in monosodium glutinate. Right, this sauce is thickening up a bit too much. <clears throat> so, a little bit more semi skimmed milk. Yep, we get milk deliveries around here. So I actually have good old fashioned milk bottles. Look at that. You rarely see those these days. Hey, do you, Daddy, do you want to put whipped cream in that? No, whipped cream isn't going to help. Yes, it is. No. And now I've got one more cheese to add, which is a very soft cheese, a smoked cheese, <laughs> just to broaden the flavor a bit more. So. So you can probably tell some of the smoked cheese is going to go on top, but a nice big portion of it is going to go in. And this smoked cheese is really nice, but it's very soft. And when the pan's hot, it's going to melt way faster than the rest. And so as it doesn't burn or anything, I find adding it later when the cheese, when the sauce is at this melting point, is a better proposition. And there we go. Oh, that's good. Also, looking at this sauce, you see that there's a lot of fat floating on the top there. That tells you you don't have enough flour. So, two more tablespoons of flour. to bond with the uh, fat. When this, is, when this sauce is oven cooked, I expect it to really bind and stick together the cauliflower. There we go. Ah, oh, this smells amazing. The garlic and the pepper are coming through. The Liam Perry sauce coming through. It's really starting to smell nice. And now apparently the cauliflower is cooked. So let's turn this right down to two. Might have to uh, get the whisk out to try it. I've got to wait for the cheese to melt essentially. And you see the lumps in there? They will just burst and be absorbed into the sauce. Just need to wait for that to happen. Don't worry, it's not going to remain lumpy. Cooking sauces on a very low heat just causes the equilibrium in the lumps to them to essentially come to the surface and pop and pop. They're nothing but flower bubbles essentially. Okay, here we go. This is gonna be noisy. This is it. So I poured the uh, placed all of the cooked um, cauliflower in the uh, in the glass tray. Uh, this is a Pyrex dish. I've poured the cheese sauce all over it. The amount of cheese sauce was just about perfect. Some of the cauliflower is sticking up, that's okay, that's to be expected. Now that's going to go in the oven for 25 to 35 minutes until it's nice and golden brown on top and I've cooked some uh, chicken burgers to go with it. We've got these lovely quarter pounder chicken burgers that we're going to have with it. Yo, 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 here we go. Oh, let's get the chicken burger out next. Oh, oh. I'm missing a plate. <laughs> ah. 
I haven't put out enough plates. Cauliflower uh, cheese bake is just, cauliflower cheese bake is just, just nearly ready. Uh, so, needs to be three plates. <clears throat> These are these bird's eye quarter, quarter chicken quarter pounders. They're really nice, um, really yummy. Uh, a good piece of uh, meat in them. But I'm having these. Uh, uh, oh, uh, they're brasswork with uh, mushrooms in. They're really nice. Mushrooms, pepper, and a little bit of mustard. German re uh, Austrian recipe. Austrian uh, brasswork. Really, really yummy. Oh, and I think the cauliflower cheese is just starting to smell done. Oh, there we go. There we are. How does that look? Wow, still bubbling away there. Cooked all the way through, lovely golden brown, lovely crust on it. <clears throat> Get the uh, spatula I like to call the shovel. And let's put some on the plates. Now, this, as always, comes out a bit more like this. Mm. Smells fantastic. The smoked cheese really giving it a wonderful flavour. As you can see, it's not overly moist, it's not running. I've got the consistency just about right. I think potentially it could have been cooked a tiny bit less. See, I'm going for a massive portion for me. That's my wife, and my son will have a slightly smaller portion. But as you can see, the sauce hasn't separated. It's not falling apart. Because I fully cooked cauliflower beforehand, it's not leaked a lot of fluid, and there's not, when you know you've done cauliflower ba um, cheese badly, when you've got this big lake appear here. Mmm. Looks like we're gonna have some left over. Or some for seconds. I'll put that back in the oven so the cat doesn't attempt to get to it. How does that sound? The oven's now off and the oven will be left open a crack. It's just it um it's about the one plate. If you leave food out at the moment with the kitten, she is managing to find a way to get to it no matter where you leave it. So the oven or the microwave actually become a haven for food which you need to wait to cool down. I'll just leave the open the oven door open a tiny bit. There we go. So, does that or does that not look amazing? I think it looks amazing. But then I'm very biased. Let's grab everybody a fork. Let's bring it up to the plate to show you and let's try some. Mmm, it's wonderful. Nice and cheesy. It's like like butter. It's it's a bit like if texture somewhere like a firm where it's between mashed potato and pasta from pasta bake. It's fantastic. Mmm, and very tasty. Absolutely perfect. So that's been cauliflower cheese cooked in the ninja foodie. Please like and share the video and thanks for watching.